Well, hello again folks, and I hope you're still all in good form, hey? Now, some of you might recognise this area, as the last time I was here last year, doing the same thing, I managed to film um, four or five fox cubs playing in the sunlight just down the hedgerow from me. They don't seem to be here this year, I don't know whether you call that a good thing or a bad thing, might depend on your point of view really. But I'm not here for foxes, I'm here for hooded crows. As the farmer has his sheep and lambs out at the minute in a distant field, so I decided this morning to try and have a go at reducing the crow numbers. I honestly wasn't sure how this footage would turn out, because between the strong gusty winds trying to blow the hide netting over the scope lens, and the bright morning sunshine glaring straight into my eyes and the camera lens, I thought the footage would be useless, but it turned out not too bad. I've shot here plenty of mornings before, and I think there's only been a couple of times the sun has actually given me any trouble, but maybe the rest of the times it was quite overcast and cloudy. The wind, however, was gusty enough, I had to peg down the hide in the net, and, and I used these little screw-in pegs I got off of eBay, as they work much better than the push-in type. The rifle for the day is the FX Crown, it's a Mark 1 with a 500mm barrel and I have it tuned to push the 218 grain h and slugs at about 900 feet per second. The scope is a Bushnell Tactical Elite 2.5 to 16 by 42 and the scope cam I'm using is the Tacticam 5.0 and the FTS unit. I haven't been waiting that long when the first bird arrives, and it's a magpie, which isn't unusual because they're usually the first ones to come down anyway. And although they are a high priority target you could say, they're not really the top target for me, the hooded crows are, as they're the ones that do the damage to the lambs. Though in saying that, I have seen the magpies pecking at the lambs in the past, but I usually leave the magpies alone and let them sort of act like a live decoy, hoping that they'll bring the hooded crows down. Though, it doesn't take long for them to get bored and fly off. But don't worry, we'll see them again later. A bit more of a wait, and we see the first hooded crow take an interest in my decoy setup. But, unfortunately, it decides to keep its distance, for now at least anyway. Well, look who's back hey, just as the sun starts to rise above the horizon, Mr Magpie, and he's brought a friend. Now, I must be getting impatient in my old age. But the hooded crows just didn't seem to be for playing ball this morning, so I decided to turn my attention on the magpies, and maybe it will shake things up a wee bit. Now, I know I'm using an FAC air rifle, but because it was going to be a gusty day, I decided to set my decoy up at 30 yards, just to make sure the wind wasn't going to give me any problems. And man, at just 30 yards, that slug hit really hard. Well, that's the first one in the bag. Let's see if that shakes things up a wee bit. And sure enough it did, as a few minutes later, the second magpie came back again. It landed well out to the right hand side and slowly walked its way in. So I patiently waited till it got within 30-35 yards before finally taking the shot. It 
looked like I hit it right between the shoulder blades, but it still managed to run about 10 yards before dropping dead. And, wouldn't you know it, just after I took the shot in the magpie, two crows did a flyby. Maybe they would have landed sooner if I had let the magpies go, I don't know. It took a bit more waiting before the crows finally took an interest again. But they were playing silly games, darting back and forth flying about in the strong winds overhead and they weren't the only thing that was annoying me the strong sunlight coming up over the horizon was starting to get very blinding as we would say in Northern Ireland it's cutting the eyes out of you but thankfully the crews stopped playing games and finally landed giving me an opportunity for a shot Another good hard hit between the shoulder blades. Step away from the trees. Thank you. Well, I'm chuffed with that, but its mate doesn't sound too happy in the distance. Well, the morning's moved on quite a bit, so I decided to go out and rearrange things. I set the two magpies I'd shot up as decoys, as well as the hooded crow I shot, hoping that that might get me another opportunity. I wasn't sure whether or not it would work, not the way the crows were behaving this morning, but you have to try something. My little home from home this morning. Now if I could get a kettle wired up and a satellite TV we'd be landed. I can't remember how long it took but after a bit more waiting the crews finally took an interest again. But they were back to playing silly games, hovering overhead, ducking and diving in the wind. I really think they enjoy this sort of gusty weather. Then one bird became three I think it was and they done the same thing ducking and diving and really looked as if they were going to land and then flew off again into the distance. It was quite frustrating especially at one point when one just dropped out of the sky and then landed on the ground. But before I even got the crosshairs on it, it was up and away again. I didn't even catch much of them in the tacticam either. Thankfully though, after a good bit more patience, a bird did finally land probably about 50 yards away, though I waited till it came within 30-35 yards before taking the shot, as it was just too gusty this morning for a long range shot. The slug hit it hard, through the top of the shoulder, though it still managed to run a few yards before finally keeling over.
its mate sounded furious in the distance, but once it lost interest and moved off, I nipped out and set the bird I just shot up as a decoy, hoping that I might pull it back in again. And what do you know hey, it actually worked, but again I had to wait till it walked down closer. Now I know my rifle with the slugs will kill a crow at 50 yards, but in these gusty conditions you could easily miss it, and I've sat and waited far too long just to miss a crow. The slug hit home hard again, though I think I hit it maybe a little lower this time as the bird managed to run a good 5 yards or more before finally dropping dead. I much prefer the shot between the shoulder blades than a side on shot like this, but beggars can't be choosers hey. I waited a wee while longer as I could hear another crow in the distance, but my patience finally peaked and I decided to call it a morning. Well folks, we'll see how we've done. This field's changed a lot since the last time I was here. There's a lot uh, more trees and bushes. Someone's even started to uh, bud on that. The farmers decided to plant out this bottom end, so there may not be too many times I'll be able to use this place to decoy once the stuff starts to grow up. But anyway, we'll start it out this time with a little fake nest I made out of uh, raffia, a few delf eggs and uh, a little uh, chick. The delf eggs are fake so you don't break them and make a mess in your bag set this bird out, I've used this bird quite a few times up one on the, the little wire cradle that I make makes it stand up and look as if it's uh, standing on its own two feet and I'll wait it a while, you know I'm getting I'm impatient at the age but a couple of magpies arrived and the way the crows were reacting I didn't think they were going to come down at all so I took uh, one of the two magpies, the second one came back again and I took it. I'm not sure if the shot was 100% or not because the bird ran about 10 yards and then dropped dead, but that was accounted for. So I set them up as decoys, this time using a little uh, piece of stiff wire up and through the chin when it works well. And then uh, I got remember where it was, no it was that in there, shot it, went down stone dead and I set it up again, that was a little decoy, second one landed, shot it I think through the corner of the wing to the side and he ran a few yards and then killed over dead too and I set up as decoy and the last one down here May well have been 40 yards when I shot it. Well, the shot penciled right through the other side. I don't know where you get that camera. Looks like it penciled right through the other side. I was aiming for about here somewhere to break the uh, shoulder bone and get into the, the heart. But he still ran a few yards before he dropped dead. I don't think I'm pushing the slugs fast enough at 900 feet per second to actually get them to open out. That's about as fast as, as I can push the 21 grain H and N slugs out of a 500 millimeter crown barrel. I know if I put the 700 millimeter barrel on it, I'll get them up a lot faster. But it'll be too long and unwieldy to work inside that wee hide so we're going to have to stick with the 500 or I suppose you could swap down impact or something else that's a bull pup to get the length of the barrel the speed up and still have a short rifle but that's what I'm working with at the minute. Next 
dogs are quite accurate. So reasonably big. But anyway, we've got three hundred goats and a couple of magpies, so far we can really happy with that. And then we start getting the lambs out. So we'll get this all gathered up and uh, head back, back home for a second breakfast. Yum yum. I do have to say, even though I'm only pushing those HLN slugs at 900 feet per second, I didn't have to allow anything for wind at 30 yards in that breezy day, yet I've shot pellets on similar days with less wind and really struggled with them. Well folks, I hope you heard that all okay through all that wind noise. And hopefully, before long, we'll get some more footage, but in much calmer conditions. Oh, and if you like the crow footage, check out my other channel, Nitro HV. There's going to be a real humdinger of a video on it, with the little 17 Hornet up on the hill. But, until then, take care and look after yourselves, hey.